I'll ask Dr. Andrews, we're, we'll, we'll sh shift gears here a little bit. Um, as a urologist, right, you know, again, where does this, where do biomarkers fit in? But what other biomarkers do you think about in the urology world? You know, in the, in the metastatic world, we're, we're starting to talk more about the cipher or other tests. You guys have a lot more experience with that. What other biomarkers should we be thinking about? Well, there, there's a lot of biomarkers out there. Yeah. And the problem is none of them really move the needle that much yet. And I think we, we sometimes try and make localized disease more complicated than it needs to be. I think localized disease can be more binary than sometimes what we really are trying to make it. There is a role for, for biomarkers, um, but biomarkers need to truly change practice potentially, not just prognosticate on, on the patient's prognosis. Probably the biggest role for urology in the localized space or pre-localized space is um, in the elevated PSA patient, whether or not it's a biopsy. So somebody with an equivocal MRI, borderline PSA, there are a few biomarkers that will help us decide should we, what should we biopsy. Um, but other than that, you know, a lot of people have different views and there's not a slam dunk biomarker for us in urology that says this is going to help the patient and change practice. Yeah, fair enough. And, and what about, there's a hot question of <clears throat> PSMA PET imaging. Where should this fit in, right, in localized disease? Well, I love PSMA PET, so that's where my research is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you know gets me excited. Um, PSMA PET is by far better than any staging imaging that we've had at localized prostate cancer before. Um, it does a really good job at detecting widespread metastatic disease. In localized prostate cancer or untreated prostate cancer, about 95 plus percent of patients will produce PSMA, if not closer to 98%. So it's very good at detecting disease. It's also good at seeing the disease within the prostate. However, its sensitivity is still a, a little bit of an issue here. The sensitivity for nodal staging, which is really what we're looking for when we're staging patients prior radical prostatectomy, is between 30 and 40%, depending on whether or not you look at unfavorable intermediate risk or high risk disease. And so PSMA PET is not good enough really for surgeons to omit a pelvic lymph node dissection mm -hmm. in the setting of negative nodes. You could make an argument in some cases in patients that are unlikely to have metastatic disease that the PSMA PET doesn't move the needle. That's going to change. I think PSMA PET is a huge step forward, um, but there is still room for improvement, particularly in terms of sensitivity. Yeah, yeah. All right. Dr. Jablani, we're talking about the PSMA PET. What about, right, in the metastatic setting, because we've got all this data, all these clinical trials, talking about high volume, low volume, how we should approach things differently. Now we've got, you know, a test that's going to show us more lesions. Mm -hmm. We could have a Will Rogers phenomenon, very <clears throat> simply, right? Mm -hmm. How do you incorporate PSMA PET into the existing data in your decision making? Yeah, so um, great question. I'm seeing so many new de novo metastatic uh, hormone sensitive prostate cancer patients just coming with a PSMA PET and no bone scan, no CT imaging, and they've been going through the ringer, seeing their elevated PSA, seeing their urologist, it's been like four months, and then for me to, to, for them to come to me and be like, oh, I need conventional imaging now, like a lot of them are not gonna buy that, they're anxious about their disease, so I, I do find myself making treatment decisions based on the PSMA PET uh, that they're coming in with a lot of times. Um, I would say if there's like florid METs everywhere, or clearly visceral METs, liver, lung, I'm calling that high volume disease. If they have a ton of bone meds, I'm calling them high volume disease. I'm talking to them about triplets. If they, you know, ADT, uh, they're alutamide docetaxel, ADT, abupred or docetaxel. If, if I feel like they're fit enough, they're young, if they meet the other criteria I'm thinking about for triplets. Um, but then there are situations where there is like four or five bone meds. And I am thinking, is this low volume or is this high volume? Would it have just been one or two METs on you know, conventional imaging? Do I talk to the patient about triplet or just doublet? So that's where I'm finding myself in, in a gray area. And um, I'm using other biomarkers such as PSA and age and fitness. Um, they're, you know, they're, as I said, if they're in their 50s presenting with a, uh, metastatic disease, I'm just like, why, why do they have such an aggressive biology? At, and they're young, maybe I should talk to them about a triplet, even if they just have three or four bone mets. So, um, yeah, definitely fits, fits into how I, how I make my treatment decisions. And I'm, I'm really seeing PSMA PET in all stages, like 
initial staging, um, after patients come from the urologist for like high-risk localized disease or unfavorable in intermediate risk disease. And then I'm also seeing you know, patients coming in for clinical trial evaluations where their community oncologist got a PSMA PET <coughs> in a castrate resistant setting. Uh, so we really need to be, get better at how do, how do we interpret these findings and how do we utilize them in clinical practice. Yeah, you know, I, and it, it's a hot question. We, we debate this a lot. We debated this at the U.S. Prostate Cancer Consensus Conference last year, um, which was an expert consensus conference about how to approach it. You know, I think the variables with imaging nowadays, a few things to keep in mind, right, is PSMA PET is, is more accurate, more specific and sensitive than technetium. So right off the bat, the alternative test is worse. Right, and, and this is an issue. We've all struggled with this for, for decades of, of how do you interpret a technetium scan. But you know, key, I think key things that, that I would ask that I would really encourage the, uh, you know, the, the practicing clinician to keep in mind. Don't overinterpret a PSMA PET. You know, we've seen the data from the UCLA and UCSF groups when you have solitary rib metastases. You know, they did a series where they biopsied these and almost all of them, greater than 90% of them, were negative for cancer on biopsy, right? And, and it's, it's really important if you're gonna call a patient metastatic based upon a single PSMA PET finding, then you run the risk of, of taking away the chance for cure, right? So really important to keep in mind the difference between metastatic disease and non-metastatic is the difference between cure and not cure, and we shouldn't take that chance for cure away from a patient. So I'd be very, very careful about overinterpreting you know, small findings on a PSMA PET. Having said that, patient with fluorid disease, right, 30 metastases, that, that's easy. But then I would also say, in the patient with 30 metastatic lesions, what's the difference between having 30 metastatic lesions or 34? Absolutely nothing, right? So finding four more lesions doesn't change anything. Um, so I agree with you, I get PSMA PET more often than conventional imaging nowadays, but if for insurance reasons or any other reason I have to get conventional imaging, it's okay, right? We can still proceed, we can still make our decisions. Um, I think the other thing I would emphasize is it takes a lot less time for the patient to get one scan instead of two, right? In terms of that investment, in terms of the cost, it's not actually that much more at the end of the day when we take all the time into account. Uh, so I think, I think we know, we see the real world data. The field has shifted, it will continue to you shift in terms of PSMA PET, and now I would say that the, it is incumbent upon us, right, the researchers, to provide the data that lets people, you know, use this test in the best possible way.